Great to see you. Um, I was just thinking this morning um, just about that word, thinking about getting up and doing the welcome. What a beautiful word that is, welcome. Um, I love that word, just that sense of just, uh, just those arms outstretched and just say, come on in, welcome. So it's great to have you here. Happy birthday to Yo-Yo for today. Yay, happy birthday. Hey everybody, just a few things we need to be aware of and that is that COVID is still out and about doing its thing in our community and in our church community. So let's just be mindful of that. If you um, know of anyone who is unwell, um, reach out to them, send a text, let them find out if there's any needs, let us know if there's um, kind of wider help that is required, that would be great. Obviously if you are having um, cold or flu-like symptoms, then stay home and um, be welcome online. 
um, that would be great just in this current season. That would be awesome. Just a reminder that masks are um, recommended in the current um, situation that we're in. Evacuation exits, we have this one here and back over there. And obviously the big double doors there, if anything happens, somebody will guide you um, on what to do if there is an emergency. So there'll be somebody wandering around with a high vis on and they're probably out welcoming people at the moment. Excellent. And toilets are out that door and to your left. Getting my directions right. That's actually a win. That's a win. Okay, awesome. Let's get into worship. Thanks, team. Jump to your feet. Yeah, Father, we thank you that, um, God, that we can come and worship you, that we're able to come to sing about your goodness. And God, we just pray this morning that we would remember what you've done for us. We would remember the life that you pulled us from and into, God. And we would praise you from that point of view. Come on, eyes wide. And eyes wide, I'm set on you. You made a road in the wild I'm standing on ancient truth I'm pressing on With my back to the past And oh Let the young see visions of the future And I sing Whoa Let the old dream dream do a new thing, I know you're moving in my world, a chain reaction of holy passion, oh, 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 o
position this morning, believing and knowing and faith that it's a new day because of what you did for us. Jesus, to 
fully praise you it will take all eternity and just like Lazarus oh you brought me back to life you brought me back to life no longer no longer
we're going to go back in there one more time. But in the moment that we're living in right now, we will never get to bring him praise from this place. So any pain or horrible feelings that we're experiencing, we can never bring him praise from this place again because when we are with him, we won't have pain anymore. So how much more of a giving over of ourselves is it to praise him from this place amidst of everything that goes on, amidst of confusion, pain, heartbreak, depression, anxiety, whether we're rich or whether we're poor, we can never sing a song like that in heaven because everything will be great. But right now, everything might not be great. So we're going to sing it again, and would you, with me, take the opportunity to sing from that place, from the not great place, and be like, I'm going to sing anyway. Yeah, we will lift our song of praise. Oh, praise the other. You are faithful, God. blessed we are to be those who who stand here this morning having having known having tasted having received of of your incredible mercy and grace and love and we just pray that as we've been um, just standing here together as 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 a portion of your church Lord God, that we've been able to just lift your name together and just bring our praise and adoration to you. I just pray that our hearts would be um, captured again, Lord God, just with the wonder, the wonder of what it is that you have done, Lord, for us, the, the mercy and grace and the love that you've lavished upon us, that we'll be able to stand here today just in response to that and lift your name on high. God, I just pray that our gaze would be again filled with you, with the wonder of just who you are and what you have done. Lord God, that you've made the way for the grave to be behind us and the kingdom of heaven to be before us. We just come with grateful thanks, grateful hearts this morning. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Great. Well, it's great to have you with us this morning. Um, if you are visiting with us, I'm not sure if I can spot any visitors necessarily, but if you are, um, we would love to just connect with you. 
um, get to know who you are and if there is anything that we um, can help you with, if there are things you'd like to know about who we are as a church community, about what we're about. Um, someone will give you a connection card and you're welcome to fill that out and um, just hand that in either to the person who has connected with you or there is a box in the front for you that you can put that in and that would be really um, helpful for us just to be able to, to relate with you and get to know you a bit more. Um, Giving Station is actually up and running again. It was out of commission for ages, but if that's the way that you prefer to give, then that is available. Um, so our FPOS machine is working again. You can still give online, of course, so we're just trying to make all those different ways um, to be there for people, just to make that easy for you. Um, right, so obviously we do still have several people in our church whanau who are um, just at home with COVID or just other bugs and flus and things that are going around. So we just want to take a moment right now to, to just actually pray together for them. So um, let's do that together. I'm obviously going to pray from the front, but join me. Join me in that prayer as we lift them to our Father in heaven. Father, we just pray for all of those who are not with us for one reason or another today. Lord God, if, if they're at home, if they are sick, if they're unwell, Lord, I just pray that they would just know your presence with them right now, that they would just have um, the comfort uh, of your spirit, that um, if they need to turn a corner in the, the tracking of the sickness that they have, Lord, today there would be just that sense of, of not heading down, but of heading up and out. God, I just pray too that as we know who those ones are, as we reach out, Lord God, that we would um, we would be Christ to them. Lord, we've sung of that this morning, that it's no longer I that live, but Christ that lives in me. Lord God, I just thank you that, that we have um, just received so richly from you and that we in turn can then give from that, those riches into other people's lives. So I just pray that as we encourage, as we give, as we care, as we um, just um, talk with, as we take meals, as we do um, errands for, Lord God, that people would just know that they've received um, from you through us, that they'll just know the touch of your mercy and grace. Thank you, Father God. We just pray for those who are particularly vulnerable to illness. And God, we just ask your, just your protection, Lord, for them. We just pray for um, those who, who are feeling fearful, that they would just, um, just know, uh, just reassurance, that they would know that you are their strength, you are their strong tower, you are their refuge in moments of fear. God, we just, we just thank you for everybody who makes up our family. Lord, you love them all and we love them too. Just pray that you'll help us to, to be that family together, Lord, in this season, that your name would be glorified, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, well, it's my uh, great pleasure to welcome Pastor Jamie to come and share the next message in our Formed for Faithfulness series. Um, I'm really looking forward to hearing Pastor Jamie's message. He got to um, test it out in Waimati last week. So um, this is draft two, <laughs> the refined version, the refined version. I'm sure it was awesome last week too, Jamie. Thank you. You're welcome. Said like a preacher who knows the feeling. <laughs> I think Dawn, you might be doing part three, are you, in Tamuka tonight of, yeah, well not part three, but draft three, <laughs> as you call it. Yeah, so back at you. There you go. Awesome. <laughs> it's the beauty of the microphone, eh? Gets passed. <laughs> awesome. Hey, great to be um, gathering this morning and um, just it's a tremendous opportunity that we do not take for granted. I feel like I'm going to be saying that in 10 years time even, eh? Just how good it is to be able to gather together and, um, and enjoy each other's company, to lean into what God is doing with us uh, in relationship to one another and to Him as a, as a body, as His body. And um, we are in a exciting time and we're actually in a great series for this time um, this is our Form for Faithfulness series. I, th I was trying to work out, I think this is actually the fourth message in Timaru in this series. We've, we're losing count. So I've been warned, don't recap with 10 minutes of everyone's messages because you'll run out of time. So um, we are going to be sharing communion at the end of service, so really excited about that. Um, just love the opportunity to gather around the centre of our faith, that is Jesus and his life laid down, and, um, and given freely to us that we would accept and, uh, and it's very much um, how we're going to close up the service this morning. So a little bit shorter time, um, but have a couple of things I want to um, bring out through um, this morning. 
I will recap on a few things for those of you, because I know people are in and out of services too, so hopefully if you have been out, um, please catch up online. We do have um, the availability for that on Facebook. If you don't know that, come and see us. We can get you connected um, so you can catch up on weeks that you perhaps would have missed. Um, but we are tracking through what is known as the Sermon on the Mount, and it is um, just a tremendous piece of scripture um, from the man himself, Jesus, really just packing all of his core key uh, launching plaid for ministry um, principles, messages, kind of the, if you want to know what Jesus was about and what he wanted us to be about, uh, these, this is where you find the reference point for most of it. Um, the Gospels obviously outline his whole life, but this was uh, very much a message at a key critical time for Jesus when his ministry uh, was just really starting to take off. Word was around, it was very well known that this man had some incredible teaching, he had authority beyond what had been known previous in these times. People were beginning to start following him. In fact, he'd called a few of his uh, direct disciples, his followers that he would call. And in this moment, there's, uh, it's out, it described as a large crowd of people have um, gathered around this person, around Jesus and his teaching. And he calls his disciples close to him. They gather close around him to hear these particular teachings. And I feel like there's even a sense of perhaps that in our time where we would gather closely to him to find out, actually, we've heard lots about church and we've seen it done lots of different ways. Church has been around for quite a while. Um, but we want to gather around the person who started it all. Let's like, there's lots of great ideas to be following, but we never want to lose sight of the author, the finisher, the perfecter of our faith, Jesus. And if there's anywhere we can grab on with full assurance, uh, it would be these sorts of texts. And I hope we're doing this in this time, especially if you're feeling uncertain or like you're not sure quite what is up and what's down. Um, that's why we're really, really zoning in on these scriptures. They're known as um, the kingdom teachings of Christ. So they're like the the, the manifesto, the description and the articulation of the life that Jesus would desire every person who would follow him to enjoy, to thrive and to live beyond human effort, to live in response to his call and his effect on their lives. Um, uh, before I do get in, I want to just also clarify that these are the teachings that were given to those followers. You know, there was lots of people around, and he specifically spoke to those who were closest in proximity to him. And there's some pretty challenging teachings throughout the whole of Matthew 5, 6, and 7. And it can be quite um, idealistic at a glance to look at these and go, wow, that's like almost impossible and really challenging, but it's so essential. And our world needs to know this. And uh, we can see, as you read through, you can see the carnage when you don't live like that. You see the benefit of when you do live like this. And it can be easy to look around to the world around us and go, they need to know this and then lose sight of the fact this was actually a message given in, you know, in proximate um, teaching to those who were close and choosing to follow Jesus, and that is us. And it's very much not the case for a lot of the world around us. So it's important that we let these messages speak to us one to another and our relationships with one another and our relationship to the world and not project the desire to see these principles lived from the world toward us necessarily. If for those who don't know Christ, who don't have his righteousness given to them um, at this point, haven't accepted it, it's unreasonable to expect people to live out of that place, right? So let's just um, clarify that um, from the get-go and, uh, and lean into really what Christ is calling us to live with him as king of this kingdom. Um, how much do I unpack? Please read this in your own time. Through from Matthew uh, 1, there's the, um, the Beatitudes, which are talked about. Um, I think Mike opened up our series. We went through the Beatitudes. Pastor, Dawn, um, uh, Pastor Matt from our Waimati campus spoke about salt and light, which comes in after the Beatitudes, and blessed are those. This is a message that is beneficial for the poor. Most important to clarify, this is important for those who get ripped off by the world. The church is to be the blessing, the gift of God to the world around us that has been given a really raw time. The church should be the place where they find hope from us. And uh, this message is good news for the poor. It's been good news for us when we've known we cannot do this on our own. God's come in and graciously met us. And that is what our world needs from us too. Um, so Pastor Matt talked about salt and light. 
And I just, there was, it's been talked about many times. It's a great story, uh, Matt told, of him being out on his bike as a young man and seeing the lights of his hometown from a distance and just explaining the sense of comfort he felt and the calling he felt really back to that place of refuge and home. And we know that um, Scripture talks about us, the people of God, being like a city on a hill, being salt that hasn't lost its saltiness, being that place that people would recognize as the place of refuge. People would see it and go, that's home for me. It's the place I can find belonging. And we want to be that light on a hill for our city around us um, to see and to know that this is a place where they can find hope and love of God. Um, And salt that has not lost its saltiness. Let's not let the novelty of this, perhaps if you heard this 10 years ago, let's not think, I've already heard it. I know it. Let's move on. Let's not lose the saltiness and let's not lose the effect of God in our lives like that day of salvation. Let it, let it come back to us. I pray that even this morning that we would have fresh, a fresh reminder of the greatness and the magnitude of God's grace and mercy upon us, that we would not lose uh, the impact that God has had on us for those around us also. Cool. And then Pastor Dawn unpacked what would be, I guess, um, the scripture that I'm unpacking this morning. We've split into uh, three sections, A, B, and C. And... Um, Dawn unpack the kind of precursor to the three, that's right, eh? Uh, which talks about um, Jesus really addressing the law. So the context of which with Jesus was speaking to was, um, obviously there'd been the Israelites had come through and they'd got the law from God. They'd got, learnt these ways, and they'd adapted actually, these ways of God to live faithful to him. And this is Jesus saying, I'm not getting rid of that, but because I am here, I want to reveal to you there is an even better way that includes that, but it actually exceeds it in many ways because I am God. I represent who he is, and my righteousness now can work in you rather than you trying to find righteousness with your acts. And um, Dawn did a great message on um, the, uh, the, not the abolishment of the law, um, about how Christ has come to fulfill the law. And he very much unpacks that in a profoundly short way in that scripture, actually. It's a pretty big topic. Um, through the previous scripture, I forget what verses it is, must be before chapter 30-ish, somewhere in there. Be reading along. I don't want to recap too much. So Mike is doing part the part before me, so we're actually skipping a section. And today we're going into th- Matthew 5, 38 to 48. So there is a section that's on anger, divorce, lust and oaths that Mike's preaching this morning in Waimati, and we're going to be hearing that here shortly. But we're jumping in, and these scriptures um, are very much addressed by Jesus. You'll see as we read them, he says, You have heard it said, but I tell you. And that's the addressing of those laws. So that if this, this passage is specifically addressing things that um, the people of God at that time actually knew the ways, the ways that had been articulated through the law. And Jesus was saying, This is what you know. He's acknowledging this is what you already know about the ways of God. But I am here. I am telling you this new perspective to have on it. So it's going from a dependence on law and the writings of and the understandings of um, God's ways articulated and lived out through human effort to but I. And because Jesus had the authority of God himself, that but I statement transfers really for the people the obligation they felt to the Lord now to a person to respond with a life that's not just obedience to law, but it's submission to the authority of this person. So a key time for the disciples, mind-bending like they'd known all of culture, following the rules and regulations was it. And all of a sudden, this person who they've been following says, you've heard it said, but I, and there's this transfer of authority that used to sit all in the law to now, this is Christ who represents who fulfills all of it. So it's not leaving it behind, but it's anchoring it in a person. And these statements are, you've heard it said, but I teachings. And so all of these sections that we're doing have some of that in there. And we will read through and hear uh, the section from top to bottom, just so we can get a bit of a grasp of the piece, the passage. Uh, It's kind of got two parts to it, which I'm going to unpack, but let's read along. It will be familiar to you, probably, because um, it's some of the best teaching you'll ever know. (laughs) <laughs> Matthew five thirty eight to 48. Good work, guys. Didn't double check with that. They got it on the go. Awesome. <laughs> you have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, 
Do not resist the one who is evil. But if anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. And if anyone would sue you and take your tunic, take, let him have your cloak as well. And if anyone forces you to go one mile, go with him two miles. Give to the one who begs from you, and do not refuse the one who would borrow from you. You have heard it said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your neighbors. Pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be the sons of your Father who is in heaven. For he makes the sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same. And if you greet only your brothers, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same. Therefore, you therefore must be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. And you can hear really in the summarizing at the end, these are uh, what you would call like kind of presumptive statements that are assuming that the hearers of these things, they actually know the Father, they know the love of God and therefore would have a response to it. Therefore, be perfect as your Father is perfect. These teachings are not, um, like I said, not for the world who doesn't know the goodness of God, the grace of God, the mercy of God that would lead us to this kind of behavior because you can't actually live out what you haven't experienced, right? And we have experienced the most gracious, merciful Father and are able to respond to this call because of what he has shown us. It's a really well-known statement. Um, I, I don't know about you guys, but I was a Christian kid raised in a secular school, Glenetti Primary Hard. Did anyone go to Glenetti? No? Good, you won't know the stories about me if you're around my age then. Um, but this is a pretty well-known statement. A lot of the secular world knows it. Eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. And if any of you are like me, I went to a, Christ, went to a uh, secular school when we were a primary school kid. We actually got reminded of this quite a lot, um, that this is just the way the world works. Um, and especially in times of bullying, these kind of statements would be brought out. And they can actually be pretty harmful when there's a power imbalance at play. Um, and it's funny, even the wording of this, eye for an eye, cheek for a cheek, reminded me of a primary school, school experience. Um, um, we used to, what was Century Pool, which is now the gymnasium on Craigie Ave there, used to get bus down there, and we'd do our swimming sports and stuff like that, and uh, go into the, the boys' changing rooms, and it would never take long before um, the changing room, everyone's getting undressed and doing their thing, and, and then you'll just see a guy grab his towel and start to spin it, and there's, man, there's definitely an art to that, eh? and so much so that I was quite particular about the types of towel I would choose from the towel cupboard at home, not because I wanted to get dry really well, but because I knew that was not just a drying towel, and, uh, and of course, one guy, with, and it would start with, like, you know, you'd try and get the best just crack noise out of the towel, get a bit, get a bit of extra, give it a flick in the shower, not too much, because it was too wet, it's slow, the action's slow. Just want it damp and just moist at the end. The number of towels I probably actually destroyed. I remember the towels all at, at the corners being frayed and falling apart. Um, but you'd try and get a good crack on the towel. And then if you couldn't match the other guy, like if the other guy was getting a good crack, you just have to one-up him. So you'd just be kind of stepping closer and getting the crack until you got it to crack on him. And we were, even this term would come out about turning the other cheek, obviously. Um, and the changing room was a lot of fun had. And it just demonstrated even what this text is talking into about uh, the escalation of offence that can happen. And you'd never want to get an equal crack. You're always trying to get a better crack than the last guy. And this would escalate, honestly, most times to the point of blood being drawn. And there's jokes about, you know, who could do the best tail flicking. And and actually, when I looked into the scripture, it was interesting um, that I'd never observed this before, but apparently the Israelite law, eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, was instated because we have this tendency, and it was known that to seek justice, it's really hard to equalize the offense that's been hurt, and we see it outplay in law and order today. When when someone's created, uh, someone's committed a crime, it never quite feels like the sentence that they serve is adequate to the crime that they've done. 
and and it reminded me of the tail ro- of the tail flicking because it never felt like you'd got the guy back unless you'd got just a little bit better than what he got you and isn't that how justice feels um, and actually this was brought in place to de-escalate the crimes and the responses people were having to crime because the effects it would have on a person never felt like justice unless it really served its purpose. Um, if it was anything less than kind of equal back to that person, it wouldn't feel like justice. And it was to stop the escalation. So it was saying, whatever's been done, make sure you match it equally. Don't go further than should be done. Because whenever you went under, it didn't feel like justice was being served. I thought it was so interesting and such a, I think, um, key principle even for us to acknowledge in the way that we... Um, equate justice in our society. And Jesus actually addressed it, obviously not wanting to keep it a level and even playing field, but what he was saying was, you're a people, and I was thinking about this like cause and effect, have been, you've been given the cause of Christ. You've been given the cause of God himself and his love and his grace upon you. Don't let the cause of the world and the cause of offense cause you to have the effect of response and retaliation that would meet or even exceed or respond. But have the cause of Christ, which has come upon you, have the effect of being someone who can absorb, where it might not feel like um, justice to you. Now, th- again, this is like, this is to be uh, not pressed upon our will, but it's to be known because we have the cause of Christ uh, upon us and therefore the effects of Christ can come out. Uh, for those who don't have the cause of Christ, and they feel the effects of the world, the cause of the world upon them, the effect will be different. But for us, Christ is saying, and he's saying in this passage, he's addressing it, an eye for an eye, you've heard it, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, but he goes on to say, turn the other cheek if someone asks you to take um, his stuff for a mile, take it two miles. If someone asks for your cloak, give him your tunic as well. He's saying, don't be a people that look for equal uh, response and retaliation. Be a people who are able to absorb the hum of the world, have we not seen that demonstrated in the person of Christ? And he's calling us to be a community that would absorb and would give something different to the world than what the world gives to us. And how sad would it be if we simply escalated or equalized the harm that is happening in the world? If we're wanting to see a de-escalation, which is what Christ wants, there's got to be somewhere there where it's absorbed. And he's calling us as his people to be a place where safety can come, where de-escalation can happen. People can find hope where they could not find it anywhere else. <clears throat> so important. Um, and Christ, um, as, as Dawn unpacked the other week, this, this is a better way. We can often look at this and think, oh, the world, the world has a great way of finding justice and it seems like it works well, but actually this is the better way. God's calling us to be, to be a light and to be a place of hope. He's not calling us to bring equalizing to the world around us. He's causing us, he's calling us to absorb and to be a place where flourishing can happen, where opportunities that cannot happen anywhere else have a root bed in soil like our lives, where hope can come and where new things can grow, where otherwise there would not be the opportunity for it. Um, Oh boy, man, that clock goes fast. It's hard to read this and not be reminded of the unmerciful servant, uh, another parable told by Jesus. Have a read over it if um, you want to at some time, about the unmatchable mercy that was shown to this um, servant who owed so much but then went outside and demanded uh, repayment of those who owed him something. And it's just a call to us as the people of God to be different amongst a world that would look for Equality found in different ways. Recently, uh, just an example, recently we had a gentleman come to our church in need, and he was pretty upfront about the fact that he was um, having a pretty tough time. He was in a financial position in between two jobs and had just moved into town, was trying to find employment, accommodation, Um, all of these things at once and was obviously in a pretty tough financial situation and he told me about it. Um, And as he told me about it, I was considering, man, 
I've actually been super blessed. Like, often we do take for granted this tremendous community that we're in. There's not, relatively speaking, there's not a lot of need amongst us because of the relationships that we have, the awareness that we have, and the generosity that flows um, one to another. And as this man was talking to me, I was like, oh, just couldn't help but think I'm completely spoiled, and I can hear the, the lack um, in this, this guy's life. And thought, for a pretty short time, I thought, man, what, why am I, what, am I consi- what am I considering when he's got this desperation of need and I've obviously got um, the excess of those around me? Um, and so hit up the storehouse team to find out what sort of money we had as a community give and spoke to Becca um, pretty quickly about what we were able to give and um, contacted this guy and was able to help him with uh, whatever we were able to. It's, it did seem relatively small to me, but I was praying and hoping you know, this would be um, really helpful for this guy. Um, but after we met with him to give him this money, it didn't take very long to find out there was a bit more to the story than I had first heard. And um, we found some new information about his history and potentially, obviously, what had caused him to find himself the position that he was in. And for a short time also, I caught myself thinking... Was that worth what we gave, uh, given the situation? And I did only think it for a short time, but I was preparing this message actually at the time. And God was like, seriously? And I was just thinking, how often do we do that? We weigh up um, the world around us, but that is not the people that we're being called to be. And I thought, actually, uh, I'm grateful this guy knew where to come. He knew he's probably been around the world um, trying to find help and aid, and standard response. What have you done with what you've got? What's your situation? How can we uh, give you the portion of what you deserve? Uh, But the church is a place where we get what we don't deserve, right? Uh, We've all received that from God, and I love that this guy, although revelation came and I was catching myself going, oh, perhaps I shouldn't have given as much as I gave. Uh, I love that he, he actually knows the house of God is a place where we get what we don't deserve. And, um, and I think that is what God wants us to be as a people. That scripture goes on to say, describe those things of generosity that God would uh, hope we would carry. So the second part of this passage <coughs> talks about loving your neighbor as yourself. And again, I found out an interesting thing as I read um, the commentaries on this, that uh, the original scripture from Leviticus says this, Leviticus nineteen eighteen. Love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. And the statement that Jesus was saying, you have heard it said, I don't know if you remember, says, um, uh, have we got that one up there? I'll go back. There it is. Uh, Love your neighbor and hate your enemy. And it's interesting, there's an added statement there, which in the commentaries say, Actually, the scribes and the Pharisees could not handle the openness of what neighbor meant. And they were like scrambling, like, we can't just love everyone. Like, we've got a limited amount of love. Surely we need to distribute this where it's most deserved. And they added this statement, and hate your enemies, to kind of balance out where the love was shared. And it's interesting because obviously Jesus tells this parable of the Good Samaritan for this very purpose. He goes, no, neighbor's not neighbor people you like, people who give you the love that you give them. Neighbor is everyone. And right here he says, neighbor's your enemy. Neighbor's everyone. And I love that Jesus unpacked that for them because they, again, were in this context of having an understanding that was previously known. You've heard it said, but I. And I love that even in Leviticus, he adds that statement. And I am only guessing he knew they would need to hear that. Love your neighbor I am the Lord. Let that be the added statement. When you find it hard to go beyond what you think is reasonable with your neighbor, know that it is I who I'm calling, who is calling you to do this. It's not something in your own strength. And that is the really key phrase here that Jesus is saying, you have heard it said, but I say. And let that be our frame of reference for living the kingdom ways that Christ is calling us to, that these aren't instructions for us to muster up strength in ourselves. But it's statements and beliefs for us to hear from 
the person himself who is our righteousness. But I say, but I say you can live like this. I say beyond your strength, you can live like this because my righteousness is in you. And I love that in Leviticus. As I read it, I was like, man, that's such a beautiful touch. Um, Love your neighbor, I am the Lord, instead of uh, hate your enemies. And Jesus was correcting that. And goes on to talk about uh, generosity. Pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be the sons, be sons of your Father who is in heaven. Again, the shallow nature of the law is being exposed by Jesus. And Jesus harks back to Leviticus. Jesus could not resist the need to explain the fulfillment of the law, demonstrating by his life toward the very people who had been who he had been rejected by. No, that doesn't make sense, sorry. <laughs> Erase that. For he makes the sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? If you greet only your brothers, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? It's the contrast of the world and the people of God. You, therefore, must be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. What a closing statement for the closest followers of Jesus as they consider all of those being drawn to be a part of this kingdom life, to be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. This is the cause and effect that we are called to live by, not the cause that the world would have on us and the effects that that would rub off on our retaliation and our escalation and our measured approach to generosity toward people who treat us well, but a cause that would come from him and his favor upon us, his grace and his mercy upon us, that the cause of that would have the effect of our lives treating others with that same love and unconditional kindness. We're going to take communion this morning, and I'm just going to pray um, before we do about just the uh, the ways that we can get caught and we can lose sight if we um, turn our ears and our hearts away from the cause and effect of Christ on us. Even in times of trial, in times of grief, in times of injustice, it can be easy to feel the cause of the world upon us in a greater measure, and therefore the effects start to come out whether we like it or not. And I want to pray this morning as we take communion that um, the cause of Christ again would take its place, take its root in our hearts and our minds, and that the effects that would come from that would be the righteousness we're being called to live by. Um, If you guys want to bring that out as we pray. We are going to do self-serve. I just think that's the wisest thing to do in this season. Um, So there's going to be a table at the front and uh, the back on the bench. Yeah. Let's pray. God, we just, we love your ways and uh, we do not understand them in our humanness, in our, in, our, in our world reference, God. We don't see the way that you see. And so we, in this moment, we come around you as a person, God. We thank you for reframing our reference for life. We have heard it said, Lord, we hear it said in the world around us every day. Someone treats you like this, respond like this. Equal and measured approaches, God, but you say to us, Lord, we have ears and hearts that would incline toward you. And Lord, I just pray you would help us in this moment as we take communion, God, to be reminded of the cause and effect that you have had upon us, Lord God. And and I pray for those this morning, God, who... Just have a heightened awareness of the cause and effects of the world, God. Perhaps that is through offence at a workplace or offence among family members, Father God, or just the grief of loss, perhaps, Father God, that we just can't see through at times. That in this moment, God, your cause and effect, Jesus, your life laid down, your life given freely to us, your grace and your mercy upon us that comes to us when we do not deserve it, God, you come generously lavishing lavishing us, Father God, removing our sin as far as the east is from the west, Lord, removing our sin and shame, Lord, 
You do it every time that we would come and incline our hearts and our ear. And God, this is why we remember again this morning. Lord, let that cause an effect on us. Cause us to live in a way that would bring hope to our world, God. This would be a community. We would be lives that could absorb, Father God, the violence of the world and would show a better way, Lord God. Not one that's inferior and weak, but one that has immense strength, Lord, that is not found in human strength, but it's found in you, Jesus. It's found in your demonstration of strength to us, which is a life laid down. God, call us out afresh this morning by your very life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Awesome. Um, I think Carl's going to head over some keys and we'll just take communion, make your way back to your seat and uh, we'll give it a couple of minutes and close up in prayer. God, we've received it in a way that it's not uh, just something that we look at. It's not just something that we um, just can sniff. But God, it's something that we 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 eat it and we drink it. Lord God, we we experience it in in a way that it becomes part of us. That it becomes part of us. So, um, Father, we just thank you that as we're reminded of that that we've pre-received that grace, Lord God, that we would um, just just take that formation on board that we've been sitting with and thinking about and learning about this morning. Lord God, that it would form us in the way that we, we live out cause and effect, that it would be the cause of what you have done for us, working in us and through us that would create the effect of how we walk that out in our, in our relationships one with the other. 
So God, I just pray that you would just speak to each one of us for what it is that we need to hear in that message of formation today. Lord, that, that we would be we would be that clay in your hands today, that we would say, Lord God, form us. Form us through the story. Form us through what it is that we've partaken of, Lord, right now as we've remembered your mercy and your grace to us, that we would be formed, Lord, from that. Lord, that we would, that we would truly love our neighbour because you are the Lord, because you are the one that directs our lives and our steps, because you are the one that, that, we, um, that we're directed by, that we reflect in our lives. God, just give us wisdom as we seek to, to walk that out in, in our relationships one with the other, that this community would be the reflection. This community would be the community where you are, Lord, that would reflect who you are. Thank you, Lord. We just thank you for your presence with us. Just thank you that you, you live within us, that you empower us, for this journey that we don't uh, do this on our own. But you've empowered us by your spirit to be able to walk this out in ways that bring glory to you and bless the world that we live in. Thank you, Father. Amen. 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 So just a few notices as we are finishing off. Um, the first one is that we have um, a position of a financial administrator. Um, this is a position that um, entails eight hours work a week. So if anyone is interested in that, um, you can talk to uh, Jamie um, or myself, just one of the church leaders, and we have a job description that we can um, pass your way and run you through what that is about. Um, very exciting. Working Bee here, Saturday, August 27th from 8 to 8. That's easy to remember. 8 to 8. Um, if you are free, sometime in that time period. You don't have to be here for 12 hours straight, okay? But if you've got some time to offer on that day, just having said that, there will be people who are here like eight to late. I know they're ready. Um, but yeah, just if you're able to come and contribute during that time. And that's because we are starting work on renovating and getting ready the next space in our building here, which is incredibly exciting, our chapel space, which is going to enable us to come in um, bigger groups and meet together and just see the next space in this provision from God um, developed into, into what we have dreamed that it can be. So that's that. Right, next notice is on the screen. No, it's fine, Rebecca. Keep me moving. It's good. Um, uh, 24 7 youth worker. So, this is about people who go into local high schools. Um, at this point, it is in Mountain View High School. So, someone who just comes and um, just works with youth. It's kind of a presence based ministry, just being there to, to encourage and to come alongside um, our young people. So, if you if that kind of sparks a bit of interest with you, you want to know a bit more, speak to Pastor Michelle and she will let you know what that is all about. Okay, so now we have time for tea and coffee now. You can stay, hang out, get to um, meet up with each other and some of the people that are coming in for our next service. So enjoy that. If anyone would like prayer this morning, um, that will be available um, in the space up here at the front. So if you'd like someone to just stand and pray with you about anything that um, you would like that for, then please feel free to come and do that. All right, great. Awesome to see you all and um, have an amazing week. <laughs>